Hey everybody, this is Matt, and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching another episode of the Plywood Les Paul. People have been calling this the Les Ply. Um, it might should be called the More Ply. Um, but anyway, so um, let me bring you up to speed with what's been going on. As you saw in the first little snippet there, um, I was sanding the back of this because I have put the first round of sealer on the body. Um, and it looks pretty neat. Now, this is just clear sealer, and I, man, I hose that stuff on there because the whole idea is to sand as much of this stuff off as we can to get the top and, uh, and back and sides to all be smooth. Um, so this is what it looks like with, uh, with sealer on it, and this is what the neck looks like with no sealer. So a handful of people have asked, are we gonna do anything to make the, the plies pop out? I think that is a pretty cool um, poppy Audi uh, uh, ply uh, presentation there, if you will. So, but there's so much more work to do on this. The uh, the next thing that we have to do is, of course, sand all of this stuff back, and um, and we'll do another round of sealer. Um, but I wanted to get this this first course on before I did the body binding. Because what I think is going to happen is stuff's going to go flying and chip in all over the place. So I'm probably going to have to do some uh, more filling after I bind as well as binding. And, uh, and of course, you know, um, uh, another course of sealer on top of that. But so we, we try to get the sealer as thin as we possibly can. You can even see in some places up here where I ground through to the, um, to the wood, I ground through the sealer. That's okay. We're, we're just, we're in the leveling process now. So this, this uh, the back has been sanded, and um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna grind some material off the sides, put the rabbet for binding in the, um, in the edge here, and then um, attach the binding. And then uh, we'll, sand the, um, we'll sand the body down, and while we're doing that, we will also be sanding the binding. So two birds with one stone. And then we'll go back into um, for another round of sealer, or maybe we'll glue the neck in. Uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, so enough with the bullshit talk. Let's get to work. Okay, so I have cleaned up the edge, and I basically just tried to make that as smooth as I could get it on my um, on my drum sander. I really just wanted to make sure that I didn't have it like a lot of bumps and stuff. And as you can see, I didn't go through the uh, to the wood. I just touched the sealer until everything was and smoothened. And now I'm going to put on the binding rabbit. We're going to use this uh, this binding. It's a half inch tall. It's ninety thousandths thick. And this is the stuff that I get from Stumac, and uh, it's cream. And I think it's gonna look pretty cool. Now, a couple of things. Um, the astute viewer will notice that I am not using a standard Gibson style neck pocket. Um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I don't like the standard Gibson style neck pocket. I don't care for the mortise and tenon. I will do it. Um, if somebody has to have it, but if they don't care, then I won't. What that doesn't allow me to do is have the binding continue from this patch here where the body stops all the way to the end where it normally would on a Les Paul. So it's gonna look a little bit different than a Les Paul. Of course, this isn't a Les Paul, so we don't care, right? Um, the other thing is there's a couple different ways, depending on when your guitar was built, if you have a Les Paul, sometimes it will have a, a flat, or the, the, the line from the back of the guitar to the, to the top of the guitar, the distance there will be the same and the binding will just follow that line. Um, if you have a vintage one or one that's um, uh, a reproduction of a vintage one, it will follow this arch right here. Now, if we're going to follow the arch right there, we need to use a different tool than what we're going to use today, which of course is my beloved pin router. And in that case, we're gonna let the, uh, the body rest on the table and we're just gonna buzz this all off in a couple of passes um, and it's gonna be cool. So, uh, remember what I said about the bullshit talk earlier? Well, enough with it again, let's get started. All right. 
right, so now I have my little binding rabbit is all the way around the body. And as you can see what I was talking about before and explaining probably fairly poorly is that the, um, let me get it into the camera here. This channel actually uh, gets taller, so I need thicker binding right here. Um, some of the old school ways to go would be to have actually had this um, be a quarter of an inch all the way around, but on this one, we didn't do that. Now, our binding is certainly tall enough to compensate for that, but as you can see on the back here, when I push it all the way down into the rabbit, I've got all this extra binding left. So I'm gonna have to cut a bunch of this off while saving the end pieces for, um, for the, thick, the thicker parts. So we're going to use the bandsaw to do that. I'm gonna mark a line here on my binding and the body so I know where I can go to and come back and I know I can I can draw a little line on here and then let's see I know I need to have that thickness of binding to right about here and that needs to stay full thickness and we'll do the other side same way Come on now. I need to be full thickness to probably right about here. Okay, okay here we let's go. go to the bandsaw. Okay guys, when I was working with the bandsaw to trim out the binding here, see what I had to do? Um, I ran out of space in my memory card and my camera took a dump. I, I don't know how to do this again to show you what I did. Um, but you'll just have to take my word for it. I just used the bandsaw to trim part of it down. Um, as you can see, I've got enough on the back to where my tape lays out and doesn't fold the binding over. And I've got plenty uh, of extra height here for the, um, the areas that are taller. So now all we got to do is glue this stuff down using my um, acetone syringe and my tape. I'll probably need to get the heat gun cranking too. It's not unlike the way they do it at Gibson. Is it? It's actually nothing like the way they do it at Gibson, huh? I, yeah, I don't think they even need to use the heat gun anymore. It just comes off of their, their, they run it through that slurry stuff and it's just soft enough to just work, I think. So the nice thing about having the top be sealed is you can actually, and, and having a, a lip of, of binding that's taller than the body or than the rabbit, is you can see it wick in there. Are you talking to me or them? Mm, I'm talking to you, but it might make it on the video. Yeah. Oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't you using cloth binding wrap like Gibson does? How long before someone says, why are you using tape? You should be using cloth binding wrap like Gibson does, Chris. 
How long will it be? Yeah, like if you like immediately as soon as they see this. Or? Uh, six comments in. <laughs> is that is that a thing? Sure. Okay. Okay, everybody, it is the next day, as you can tell, because I have a different shirt on. And no, I'm not just putting a different shirt on on the same day to try and fool you. I actually did go home last night uh, and let this sit up overnight. You don't need to, but I did. So let's peel off all the tape and see what it looks like. Now I'm peeling off tape in high speed. Okay, guys, here it is, all bound up. You know, it kind of just looks like another ply in the plywood. <laughs> I mean, on the edge, it looks, it looks like binding, but on the front, it just sort of looks like more, more plywood. So, um, gosh, I don't really quite know what to do, but I'm sure that you guys will tell me I should have used black, or I should have used white, or I should burst the body. Um, and who knows, maybe we will do something like that. But I think that's enough for today. Um, in the next video, I'm going to sand the top and get the, uh, the binding level and we'll get the neck set and, um, and get it in for sealer as well. Um, you know, binding a Les Paul can be tricky and there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, the, uh, the acetone in the syringe trick is a pretty good one, and I would advise you guys to consider using that. So, if you have any questions about what we are doing in this video, why we are building a guitar out of plywood, um, what you think it's going to sound like, what you think I should have used besides plywood, uh, any of those questions, please leave them in the comment section below. If you want to deep dive into that with me in an email, you can get in touch with me through the website. That's texastoastguitars.com. If you like the video, give me the thumbs up. And more importantly, if you didn't like the video, make sure to give me the thumbs down. I'm seeing a lot of new faces in the comment section, and um, some of those guys are very cool, and some of them are very critical. So maybe I'm getting more thumbs down. I don't know. But if you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. We've gotten a couple, three new Patreon members, and that's very cool. Thank you guys for helping us support the channel that way. If you can't do Patreon, though, we totally get it. Please like the video and share it as many places as you can possibly think of to help us grow the channel that way. <sighs> so until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody.